There we go. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I hope you're doing well. Will, how you doing? I'm doing great. Hanging in there. I'm all right. I think I might have sharded myself, but we're going to figure it out as we go along. Oh, we're going to figure it out real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that should be priority number one. I did not. I'm, just having, a, I'm just having fun. Uh, guys, thanks for being here. Uh, so much to talk about. There's a lot, actually a lot here. Surprising a lot. Surprisingly uh, a lot. But I heard about some Nintendo Switch 2 rumors. Yes. A couple of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, a, do another little roundup. Yep. And I have broken out the whiteboard again. Oh, now if you're unfamiliar with what this is, we do have a whiteboard uh, yes, with sir. Switch 2 rumors and their sources. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so this is a log so that we can eventually see who was right and who was wrong yes. and which one of these leakers is to be trusted. Yes. Uh, there are some pretty obvious rumors, like mm-hmm. some rumors that I think are like, like a swoosh. Yeah. Like there's no way they could, you know, like I could have guessed this from right. a mile away. Yeah. But there's some rumors that are just absolutely insane. Right. That I could never see mm-hmm. from a mile away. Uh, and we'll get into all of that. There's also a bunch of other stuff. We got to talk about the PS5 Pro yet again. Yes. Uh, also the PlayStation 6, apparently. Because that's Cause never it too, just never ends. Never it's too never, late for that. Yeah, this is going to keep end. going until yeah. we die, and then after that, and then after that, uh, and there's more stuff. But before we get into that, uh, I want to thank some people, and I can't because uh, I don't have Streamlabs open. But I bank, do. Bank wise, yes. thank you for the description. My favorite podcast and bros. Oh my god. Oh, thank you that's so us. Jeffrey Sorensen, for, uh, with the th- 38 months, forgive me for missing you guys last week. Partial lunar eclipse tonight? I heard there's a meteor. That's Okay. I saw an article that said there's a meteor that's coming dangerously close to Earth. Okay. It will be 100 million miles away from Earth. Oh, no. I was like, that's... That's... <laughs> <laughs> doesn't seem... <laughs> I, that's, I mean, that's probably close in space terms. In space terms, yes. yeah. But I, Things are different in space. Speak English, Will. Okay. I speak English. <laughs> uh, underscore, thanks for the 79 months. Onions are tasty. Thanks for the 19 months. Uh, they're not. No, never was never a fan of onions. And I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, also, one last thing I wanted to get into. Uh, I usually like to make a little tweet before we start the podcast. Yes. And this time I made a tweet uh, where I showed that we have the Switch 2. Yes. Here it is. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will see that uh, I just generated this on Google. Uh, I, I mean, on uh, on uh, uh, Photoshop. Right. It's a generative image. Okay. Uh, you might notice the one, two, three index fingers. Yeah. Uh, you might notice the double-sided microphone, whatever this red thing is. Uh, and Will is broken. Yeah. It added a crotch for you. <laughs> <laughs> See, I did not notice the uh, the Photoshop image manipulation thing at the bottom. So I just asked you why my hand looks like it was made with generative <laughs> AI. <laughs> That's just, you know I thought you had an ugly hand so yeah. I, I wanted to, I wanted to fix it. I thought that was one of like some random things you got from like a random Chinese company. Oh, so it worked. <laughs> no, the, uh, legitimately though, this is what the image looked. Okay. This was the image. So you had a fist, right? I'm sitting like a normal person. It just didn't want you to have that. Okay. And I don't know why it like put a little red thing. I don't know. It like it did some weird shit. Right. That's why AI will not be taken over anytime. Uh, all right. Well, let's get let's let's, let's just let's, do it. Let's, let's just, start just ripping go through right these into rumors. It. Now, I just kind of collected a a, a, a hodgepodge mm-hmm. of rumors here. Uh, this one was the one that I was like making the rounds yesterday. I think uh, I don't know this website. FCC, WCCF Tech. News I, to me. I feel like a lot of like switch rumors like always come from like random websites that we yes. never hear of yes you know uh but i had heard this it they're reporting on leaks that came from somewhere else okay just like every other website mm-hmm. does uh this uh 
is the Nintendo Switch 2 console has entered full production and the an unofficial name that has been used so far for the system may be the official one, according to the rumors circulating online. As reported on the Gaming Leaks and Rumors subreddit, a Famiboard user called FWDBWD. Forward and backward. Oh my God. That I got it. I figured it out. I'm smart. Now. I'm smart, people. So. Should I say it's a fam a family board member? Yes. Uh, I will say F W D B W D Fammy. Okay. I'll just put Fammy. And the rumor, I'll keep reading. Shared yeah. the new information discovered on the Chinese forum from a posed line worker regarding the console. This Chinese user revealed that the system has begun production with a quota of 1,000 units per a day per worker. How many workers they got? Must this, have a lot. The system is slightly larger than its predecessor. I like that. It has a smaller bezel and will come with black and white Joy-Con controllers. Additionally, the system shows a number two logo on the side, suggesting that the Nintendo Switch 2 will indeed be the official name of the system. Okay. I feel like that's the big one that that's, we have a name. Yeah, I heard. I, I only heard the name. Right. Uh, I didn't even realize that all this other information was part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not even the name is the Nintendo Switch Two. It's yeah. that it has a big two on the side. Yeah, <laughs> and that's part of the logo. So I guess what I'll write is uh, Nintendo Switch Two. Mm hmm. And black and white Joy-Con. And it's going to be bigger. Did it say slightly bigger? It said... Smaller bezel. Slightly larger than its predecessor with a smaller bezel. Which, I mean... Slightly hard. I have to probably <laughs> digitize this. Or <laughs> get a bigger it. board. Get a bigger board or run out of room. Ooh. Especially with all these uh, little, little addendums on yeah. here. So... Okay, what else do they have? More information on the new Nintendo console may also have come from a new report from a Taiwan Economic uh, Daily. The report reveals that the new system will be larger than its predecessor, featuring better battery life, some AI features, mm. likely NVIDIA DLSS support. Okay, so they said AI features, not... They're speculating now. NVIDIA DLSS support. Yeah. Uh, and dual screen design. That is insane yeah the console's price is estimated to be 400 dollars. that i believe yeah which is an increase over the launch price of the original switch but will all but still a reasonable increase compared to the playstation 5 pro price as for the console's reveal it is reported that it has been moved in response to the ps5 pro announcement mm. uh but it will still come within the end of the calendar year that's weird to move yeah it i don't think it has anything to do with that nintendo does not generally do that type of thing yeah and also it would have been a much bigger news yeah than the ps5 pro announcement mm -hmm. i could see moving it because of some iphone stuff yeah <laughs> as the nintendo switch 2 is supposedly releasing sometime next year it likely won't take much longer to finally know which of these many rumors on the system works correct blah 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 um okay i want to know about the uh taiwan economic daily well, I guess it's that whole website is what's reporting yeah. that it's going to have a dual screen design. Yes. I'm putting dual screen design down. I'm not putting DLSS. DLSS and better battery life. Like better battery life. That's just obvious. Assume. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously. battery life on the launch switch yeah. sucks. I wouldn't put down AI features because there's no way in hell it's going to have that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't believe that yeah. at all either. I mean, I want to put down some wacky shit, but yeah. uh, AI features, I think, is way too broad. Yeah. A lot of chips these days are coming with AI stuff built in, mm -hmm. and that's just the way it is. It's just going to yeah. have the ability to do right. AI stuff just because it's part of the chip. Yeah. It's kind of like how a lot of Wi-Fi cards have Bluetooth. Yeah. Whether or not you turn on the Bluetooth is up to you. Mm-hmm uh so what am i putting here dual screen design yeah 
We'll s- it, hey, it could be one of those foldable doohickeys. No way, you think? Uh, it could be. Hmm. We did see a patent for some wacky uh, tri screen yes. thing. Or actually, well, no, it the, looked like it was tri screen, but then it turned out it was just was dual screen. Huawei or the other one came out with a tri screen phone. Yes. yes. Uh, it was Huawei. Yeah. Uh, but no, we, we saw a Nintendo patent for a screen that uh, was like this, and yeah. then you can like flip it like a sidekick. Okay. Remember? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Dual screen, uh, according to Taiwan. God, my hair rank sucks. Economic Daily. I'm never going to be. Okay. Uh, shall I read what we have here so far? Uh, why don't we keep going through okay. the rumors and then okay. we'll go through. I feel like some of these are going to be repeats. Right. I didn't realize that one was going to have so much information. Uh, notebook check. There's leaked Nintendo Switch 2 price appears to be good news. I think that's the $400 price tag. Yeah. $400 for the base model. Oh, we're, we're having different models now. Yeah. This is lower than the $499 price point claimed by an author uh, from August. More interestingly, the $400 Switch 2 starting price, if true, is pretty good news for the fans. Uh, the OG Switch launched back in 2017 for $300, but just for inflation, that comes down to $366. Now, okay. should I put the price down? $400? Yes. Okay. I would say because I feel like everyone's going to have a different opinion on what the price is. Four hundred dollars. Uh, this is Moisty Harley is the user, <laughs> and uh, apparently they. Oh, this is on a GTA Six Discord server. Okay. So that that's it's just, it's just a fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's just a random guy. Uh, well, down further in this article, I I don't know if it's also Moisty Charlie, but uh, the Switch Two will allegedly be available in two different SKUs. However, the leaker shares no other information. So we don't know the specification, design, and performance of between the different Switch 2 units. So the previous article said that it's going to be black and white Joy-Cons. Right. I'm going to go, go out on a limb and say the two SKUs are a black version and a white version. This article suggests that uh, the two SKUs is a Switch 2 Lite and a dockable Switch 2. So they think that they're going to come up with the light version at the same time as the dockable version. I think that's a good idea. I don't know if Nintendo would do two SKUs or, yeah. or, or two not SKUs, two completely separate systems that require two completely separate manufacturing processes. I think, if anything, they will come with a Switch 2 with a dock and a Switch 2 without a dock. I can see that. Like the same exact thing, just one has the dock and one doesn't. Yeah, I don't see them releasing a brand new system with uh, multiple pieces of hardware along The with only it. time they did a, a launch with two different SKUs was the Wii U. There was an 8 gig model and a 32 gig model. And then yeah. eventually they scrapped the 8 gig model. I could see that. I yeah. could see more internal storage. That was a big problem with the Switch originally was it had barely any mm-hmm. internal storage. I could see that, but having to manufacture a whole separate device is, yeah. is a lot. Also, they make a lot of money having a mid-cycle refresh. Right. You know? um, okay. Uh, I think Taiwan Economic Daily also said the price was going to be $400. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to <laughs> write that on here. Uh, just T-E-D. Ted. I'm just going to put it out. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that's the second article was right. just, I guess, the price, which which that price sounds totally yeah. normal to me. Uh, that sounds legit. I, I, I would... Uh, I think things are just getting a lot more expensive, so... Yeah. A price like that makes total sense. Uh, but they're going to try their best to still be a lot cheaper than other stuff that's yeah. on the market. Right now, uh I mean you have stuff like the Xbox Series S. That's insanely cheap. Yeah. But no one's gonna be buying that mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, very soon. I I mean I feel like people are gonna be buying it very soon if you know these consoles don't come down in price. Yeah. So you have Xbox Series X for five hundred and then they have the more expensive version. Yeah. Uh for what, six hundred? Yeah. Uh, the one with two terabytes. Mm-hmm. PlayStation 5. 
is, is 500, 500, but it's about to go up. Yeah. It's about to go up to 550 because it has in every other market. Uh, and then we have the PlayStation 5 Pro, which is 700 goddamn yeah. dollars. So without Ninten a disk drive. <laughs> without a disk drive. So Nintendo being uh, $400 still makes it the cheapest console. Yeah. Uh, and it gives us some room to have some more stuff packed into it. Yeah. The Steam Deck is $400 at, at its cheapest. Yeah. Uh, so that seems very reasonable. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd imagine there'd be a, a decent amount of power yeah. in there. The next article is from Tweak Town. Uh, it looks like it repeats the Taiwan Economic Daily news. You have um. Oh, but they have an AI generated image of a dual screen design. Oh, look at that! And left Joy-Con red, white Joy-Con, right Joy-Con white. Interesting. That's, so, what are their sources? Their sources is probably some AI bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the same stuff. And then there's okay. one more article from comicbook.com who says, uh, reveals the co the colors of the console. I bet this is black and white. Yeah, family boards. See, I got clickbaited because the picture they used, mm -hmm. uh, which you can't see because there's a giant ad, was pink. Oh, that's how I get you. That was some good clickbait. Okay, so all the, all the rumors are pretty much... Yeah. The absolute most wild one is the dual screen design that yeah. doesn't make any sense to me yeah i can't see this thing with being a dual screen setup i mean it would be nice maybe that's their way they can uh get ds games on there it would be very obviously a different console so they yeah. wouldn't have to worry about the whole uh wii u debacle yeah uh i mean just calling it the switch 2 i think would yeah. be improvement over the that's a lot more you got to put into the system. Yeah. And it's a lot more processing you got to worry about. And you already are, are way behind everybody yeah. else. Uh, I think it would be cool to have another screen. I like weird devices. I like weird aspect yeah. ratios. I like having weird layouts for, for, for stuff like for games, like having two, having two screens to play one game right. is weird and could be really cool. But I just want a switch that is a little more powerful. Right. And that's basically it. Maybe mm -hmm. redesign the Joy Cons. I don't need a whole nother screen to justify buying a new switch. Yeah. I just need a console that packs a little more power. And that's it. Uh we can look at the rumors we've had in the past. Yes. We have magnetic joy con. Yes. That's by a username Vandal. Yeah. Now we don't know what that means. It could be Hall effect, but they seem to suggest that it was uh, it attaches magnetically. Attaches magnetically. Twelve gigabytes of RAM, two six gigabyte sticks. That's by a user named Lic. Yep. Uh, two hundred fifty six gigabytes of storage. That makes sense to me. I can yeah, see that happen. I would. I would imagine Nintendo would finally want to like add more storage. Yeah. To their systems and it needs more RAM. The current one only has like four gigabytes yeah. of RAM. Uh, but we got PC handhelds that are going up to 24 gigabytes yeah. of, of RAM. You know, I think the Steam Deck has 16. So, fucking yourself at 12 is a little crazy. Like, well, Nintendo, bump it up to 16 at Nintendo least. Nintendo usually does do, like, you know, the most with the least amount. So They do, and they're always usually a little bit behind. Right. But you're already going to be a little bit behind if you if you put 16 gigabytes. Right. In, because everybody else is going to be moving on. Yeah. So... Uh, that's a weird amount. Yeah. Uh, mic in the controller and the console. Two different mics. Yeah. This is according to Centro Leaks. Centro Leaks does a lot. Yeah. They they do a lot of leaking. Uh, eight inch display. That sounds reasonable. Yeah. I'd imagine the display would be bigger. Yeah. Uh, than I mean, what we have now. I I mean, eight inches might be too big. At the very least, like, what's the switch? What's the OLED right now? Seven? It's seven. Yeah. seven. Okay, so maybe eight. Wins. Is it seven? What's the... Um, the Lenovo's the one with the big screen. How big is that? That's eight, I think. All right. Now I'm all fucked up. The Switch has a... The regular Switch has a 6.2-inch display. The OLED has a 7-inch display. Okay. The Lenovo is 8.8, 8, so okay. it's almost nine. Okay. Uh, I'm playing around with a handheld right now that okay. has an 11 inch screen jesus christ and i have to tell you i 
love having a big screen. <laughs> it, it's it's cumbersome and weird, but having a big screen to play with okay. is great. I don't like the Lenovo Legion Go isn't my favorite PC handheld, right. but I use it a lot just because the screen's so big. Okay. Um, I'd imagine, I mean, they said, one of the leaks said that it's going to be a little bigger, the Switch 2. Uh-huh. I would imagine it's not going to be that much bigger, and there's just going to be a lot less bezel. Yeah. And that's why the screen will be bigger, mm -hmm. which is fun. Um, so, yeah, the last thing was Central Leaks 8-inch. Uh, March 2025 launch, that's according to TVPH, which I think there's a rumor that that might have been delayed. Yeah. Uh. I wrote that down. Uh, I don't. I mean, that's one of those situations where it probably was supposed to be March 2025, and yeah. then got internally delayed or yeah. something. Uh, that seems like a safe bet. Yeah. Nintendo Switch Two is the name, and that's where we came to today. Yeah. That was from FWD BWD on Family Boards. That seems obvious, but they also included black and white Joy-Con and slightly larger. Yeah. And then according to Taiwan Economic Daily and Moisty Charlie, we got dual screen and $400. Yes. And I think all of this seems like a safe bet. The only thing is the dual screen. Yeah. Dual screen, uh, that's a wild, that's a wild card. Yeah. And if that was true, I would be shocked and appalled. Uh, and, and that's, that's your, uh, switch to rumors. Well, those are rumors. Okay. But we do have a fact. A fact a about fact. the Switch 2? Yes. I slipped, I slipped it in right in the, the whole section because okay. we have a game announced for the Switch 2. What the hell? Uh, the next game, the My Time at Porsche uh, developer, is confirmed for the Switch 2. My Time at Evershine will be the next game in the series from Studio Pathia Games. Uh, and its confirmed platforms include... Future Nintendo platforms yet to be announced alongside PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. Uh -huh. So there you go. We have seen similar things happen where they say Nintendo family of platforms. Yes. Yeah. For future games that, that are yeah. not out yet. Uh, it used to be like when the Wii U was on its way out and people wanted to start putting games on the next system, they would actually call, say coming to NX. Which was what the Switch was known as at the time. Yeah. Uh, right now, if they wanted to do something similar, they would call it, they would say, coming to the successor to the Nintendo yeah. Switch, because yeah. that's what Nintendo has been calling it. So here you go. Uh, a popular life sim game, uh, where this time you play as a governor in a town. So is this governor. a governor? This is a Kickstarter project right now. Oh, okay. uh, it's up on Kickstarter. It, uh, uh, the campaign uh, launched on. The campaign is launching on September 24th. Uh, and if successful, it'll come to the Switch too. I uh, don't think this is anything crazy because uh, <laughs> we've, uh, again, seen similar situations before. Well, this uh, is the it, first, like, according to Eurogamer, this is the first confirmed release. Everything else has been, like, rumored. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they're nailing down, like, this will be on the next Switch yeah. console. But... We already know, like, Nintendo already confirmed that we are getting a new Switch. Right, console, but, like... We'll hear about it very soon. But, like, very few games have, like... Right. ...said flat out, like, this is coming to the next system. A lot of games are still saying this is coming to the Switch. Yeah. If this is a Kickstarter, <sighs> they are targeting the next yeah. system. They're not necessarily confirmed to be on they the next They probably system. don't have dev kits for yeah, it. Yeah, they, they probably don't yeah. know how to get it on there. Yeah. Um... We got two dollars from One Me Games. It says I predict two SKUs, like the eight gigabyte and thirty-two gigabyte Wii U. Yeah, I mean, if the rumor says there's going to be two SKUs, I'm going to guess colors. To be completely yeah. honest. Yeah, I I would see that more so than like different hardware specifically. You know. Yeah, I mean, the next most. Uh, Safest bet would be uh, uh, storage. Yeah. Uh, the next day after that would be bundle stuff like like the like the dock. Yeah. Or maybe a micro SD card or a yeah. game or something. I don't know. But uh, having a light version is insane. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know where uh, that those. Who said that? Uh, f was that was that the first article? I think that was uh, 
Taiwan. Taiwan. Taiwan said, Economic Daily. It was reported it would be moved in a response. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that's uh that's insane. Should should maybe write that one down. We gotta yeah. write some wacky ones. Yeah. Down. All right. Uh we can move on. Holy okay. lettuce, thank you for the twenty months. Uh how are you guys? Thanks for the pod. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Rolo, thanks for the two months. Hi Bob and Will, the only ones on Twitch who deserve my prime sub. Thanks. Thank you. Subscribe with Twitch Prime. Yeah. Because uh, if you have Amazon Prime, it's a free subscription and you are just not using it if you don't know about it. All right, next news. I guess we could talk about PlayStation again. Yeah, it's your turn now, Sony. Your disk drives are selling out. Uh, after the reveal of the PS5 Pro on Tuesday, it was a mat- It was made clear that in order to get a disk drive for the new console, you'd have to purchase an external drive. Uh, since then, as spotted online by Wario64, the peripheral has been selling out everywhere. As of the right, as of this writing, uh, the drive is number eight on Amazon's best sellers for video games. On Best Buy's website, you can't even order the drive anymore as it's currently sold out. It is still available on sites like Target, Walmart, and PS Direct. Um, The external PS5 disk drive was made available when the new PS5 Slim consoles were announced uh, and released in 2023. Uh, Moving forward, it seems clear that you will want uh, to play physical media on your console. You will have to buy an add-on rather than having uh, one as a default option. Currently, it retails for $79.99. Uh, with a $700 price tag on the PS5 Pro, you are looking at an $800 plus after taxes uh, for the mid-gen upgrades to, uh, from Sony. So, shockingly, people are actually buying disk drives. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what that's about. Are people buying it? Uh, well, it could be. It's two things. It could be people buying it in anticipation for the new console. Right. Which is crazy because... We keep talking about how nobody wants this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it seems like some people want it because they're buying the disk drive. Yeah. I think what's most likely is people didn't even realize you could buy a disk drive. And this whole news about the PS5 Pro, people are being like, oh, wait, you can just slap a disk drive on the <laughs> side? It's like that easy? I th- Here's my theory okay. on it. I don't think Sony made a lot of disk drives. Yeah. So uh, it's not that... A lot of people are buying these. Okay. I think that, you know, whoever is buying them just happens to be like buying up the stock of disk drives. Yeah. Because, I think I think it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of yeah. column B. I think people are seeing that the the disk drive is the disk drive is in the news now. People are now yeah. know that there's a disk drive. And then they're going to buy it. And that means like ten people bought a disk yeah. drive because there's none to go around. Because, like, we always hear time and again, like, uh, Capcom's, 80% of Capcom's revenue is digital. Like, 90% of Sony's revenue is digital. We keep hearing, like, all these companies, like, their revenues are all in digital. But people are now buying disk drives all of a sudden. Yeah. You were telling us one thing, but now all of a sudden another thing is true. Yeah, I think that you're right. They just didn't make that many of them. Yeah. Uh, This is an aside, but I saw a tweet going around. Uh... It stemmed from a Colin Moriarty video where yeah. he talks about, uh, you know, this is just the deal these days. Uh, most sales are digital, so right. this is just what you get now. You're getting consoles with no disk drive. And then somebody responded with a bunch of numbers saying, no, <laughs> there's a lot of, most sales on PlayStation are still physical. And then they listed a bunch of numbers. And these numbers didn't look right. Like, right. the only one that's above 50% for digital is MLB 21. Okay. That's a 61%. You're leaving out Madden. You're leaving out FIFA. Yeah. You're leaving out uh, uh, Call of Duty. All the games that are here are, like, uh, the single-player experiences that, you know, normal, like, gamer, like, a normal person right. like us would want to play. Yeah. Not necessarily, like, you know, uh, your fr- Jimmy, your friend from high school, yeah. you know? Um. So yeah, and then I I saw some of the replies were like, um, what are you doing with these fucking numbers? <laughs> uh, so then I found this. I don't know the source of this, but uh, PlayStation Five, uh, no PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five digital game sales, uh, from the fiscal year 
2023 uh for the full year 70 percent digital mm -hmm. for all sales yeah uh that's fucking a lot yeah also the numbers that this person was taking in the in the previous tweet uh was uh from past year it like started in like 2021 right so like obviously things are getting more and more digital yeah this isn't the defense of sony i don't like that there's they're they're going all digital i don't like that they're putting a lot more stock into being digital right uh but you can't deny that i think the 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 the, the, uh, nor the normal people the ones who aren't chronically on video game twitter yeah uh those people it's just easier for them to download stuff. Yeah. You're just going to hit the download button. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think people realize that, like, they need a disk drive, so they're buying the disk drive, but they didn't make a lot of disk drives, so it just looks like it's selling out of there. I also saw people saying it's a pro version, so this is supposed to be for the, like, hardcore gamers the one who the ones who would want to play yeah um all of these different types of games all of these like single player experiences these mm -hmm. are for these are for pros and so it should have professional uh, uh stuff in it and come know? at a professional price <laughs> yeah my argument mm -hmm. is the MacBook that we're looking at over there yeah my MacBook Pro from what 2016 i want to say yeah with a big whopping two USB C ports, and that's it. Yeah. Not a lot of professional stuff yeah. is going to be going through <laughs> that MacBook Pro. And they do the same thing with iPhones. They slap yeah. a Pro on it, and it's not really that much crazy. If it was truly a Pro system, it would have a disk drive in it because yeah. most professional gamers would get their games. This is for the enthusiasts, and the enthusiasts buy games physically. Yeah, I truly think again this is just the console uh to this is the console because they're in the middle of the generation, they need something new to get people mm -hmm. into the ecosystem. Uh and you got Grand Theft Auto 6 coming out next year yeah. and you're going to have peop an influx of people buying PlayStations for that. Uh it's one it's like the first like big budget like what like 20 million seller game that you can't get on playstation yeah. for yeah so uh there's gonna be people buying a system for that and mm -hmm. they're gonna walk into games and they're gonna say give me the most expensive one and it's gonna be a playstation yeah. 5 pro or they're gonna go pro i'm a pro yeah i want to be the pro the actual moniker pro doesn't mean anything turbo limit thank you for the prime cheers to my favorite uncles hope to meet you two out at a con someday i'll have my rg 35 xxsp ready to sign and will kindly request my free signed comic book from will that's me if i ever get to a con again <laughs> uh i kind of want to go to portland retro game expo whatever yeah uh, but i know a place we could stay <laughs> oh well, they're doing the uh, the face ball. Oh, I saw that. Uh, yeah, sixteen player Game Boy LAN. For those of you who don't the know, attempt. baseball baseball is a first person Game Boy game, regular old green screen Game Boy that has the ability to link up sixteen Game Boys for multiplayer. Yeah. And they're gonna do it at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Come hell or high water, they're gonna so do it. The YouTuber is Stop Skeletons from Fighting. Yes, they a big did fan it, of theirs. They did it a few years ago and couldn't get all 16 connected. Right. So there's all, because they have to be daisy chained. Yeah. So s inevitably something yeah. happens. It, it, it's, you know, you're going to, if something in the chain's fucked up, you're going to lose yeah. uh, some people. So uh, I'd imagine this time they'll be more prepared. And this mm -hmm. might be the first time ever we have documented proof of a 16 Game Boy yeah. multiplayer uh, a game going on. So I wish I could see it. But I don't want to fly all the way to Portland <laughs> just for that one thing. Although a little part of me does. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, oh, more PS, more PlayStation news. We're skipping the pro altogether. Yeah. 
Pro is dead. We're switch, it's time skipping to go right over the right five. Right to the PlayStation Pro. Six. It's six time. Uh, on the heels of the PS5 Pro reveal, new traces of the PlayStation Six suggest uh, Sony is once again eyeing backwards compatibility and tapping AMD to power its console. Um, Reuters reports that in 2022, Intel lost the contract to provide chips for the PS6 to AMD. Intel reportedly uh, internally valued the contract, which would have seen lower profit margins than some chips uh, than some chip deals, but importantly, it would have secured steady sales for the company at roughly $30 billion. It's unclear how this figure was calculated, but just as the PS4 outsold the PS3, the PS5 sales have trended ahead of the PS4, both in general and in many regions at several points. In total sales, the PlayStation 5 is roughly at uh, 26 million units uh, behind the PlayStation 4, but that's largely due to its relative newness as well as a launch slowly, a launch slowed by supply issues caused by the pandemic-related production bottlenecks. In other words, although the shape and nature of the console market remains to be seen, Intel had reasonable, uh, Intel had reason to be optimistic, optimistic on the PS6's valuation here. One key point in Intel and Sony's discussions was backwards compatibility. The PS5 also uses an AMD chipset, as does the Xbox Series X, which means sticking to AMD for the PS6 would simplify the process of enabling backwards compatibility. This was a key selling point for the PS5, which supports the vast majority of PS4 games. This was also a subject of discussion between Intel and Sony engineers and executives, Reuters reports, though it, seem, it seemingly wasn't the detail that buried the deal. Rather, Intel apparently wanted a larger chunk of the each chip sold, leading to a dispute with Sony and leaving the door open for more competitive bid from AMD. Backwards compatibility has been discussed more heavily as new consoles like the Xbox Series S and now the PS5 Pro have phased out disk drives in favor of cheaper all-digital form factors, sometimes with external drives uh, available as a standalone. Uh, console game sales have been trending digital for many years and hardware uh, has followed suit. This has drawn a line between backwards compatibility and disk compatibility. Intel really fucked that up. Yeah. Intel uh, is not doing too good mm -mm. comparatively compared to other chip manufacturers. NVIDIA is doing crazy. AMD, I think, AMD's is doing, doing pretty great. Decent. Yeah. Uh, they, could, they couldn't afford to fumble this. Yeah. Like, uh, if they even have a chance to be in the running for a PlayStation 6, they should have. Yeah, cut a great. I'd deal imagine for that. like I, I'm not saying like they're you know AMD and Intel like they're similar, but they're both x86 based chips. So the ability to have you know older systems work with you know the PlayStation Six shouldn't be that hard if they went with Intel. But yeah, especially because things are you know working on PCs. They're, yeah, they're, it's still very similar. Yeah. Um, but man, having the next PlayStation work on Intel would have been great for your, your yeah. PC stuff too. I mean, I don't know what, I don't know how much of these companies market is peripherals or, or, or sales for PC components. You know, yeah. all these companies do like a lot of weird shit. Yeah. Um, but I'm imagining being the manufacturer for chips on the PlayStation six. Yeah. And then, People making games on PC or building people building PCs on their own yeah. would be like, I want the chip that's in the PlayStation Six. The yeah. one all the games are being developed for this system. I want a PC that's just like right. that system. That would make a lot of sense. But now it's all AMD. So I remember back in the day, AMD was the cheap one that nobody wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, Intel is the one that's fumbling. And they're, not, if, and they're not even cheaper. Yeah, they're not. And imagine if you uh like. Imagine if they could swing uh, Intel Arc. Imagine if they can get Intel yeah. Arc uh, or, or some sort of messaging that the new PlayStation is working on, is running on Intel and yeah. and their GPU. Uh, that would be huge for them. But no, instead the, the they were PS like, "I want more money." The PS5 runs on a custom eight-core AMD Zen two, variable frequency up to three point five gigahertz. The PlayStation Five, correct? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, having the better backwards compatibility, I mean, it would just be really easy for them to do backwards compatibility yeah. if the chip was like almost exactly the same, right. which is a possibility. Mm -hmm. it, it could just be the exact same AMD chip, just, you know, 
fucked up a little bit yeah. or or you know like the second version of the amd chip um but again a lot of these games run on pc so yeah it could have they could have gone with anything if they had a good enough deal all right i don't know why i mean i know why they're thinking about this already because they have to is their job yeah but uh crazy that that leaked so early yeah and uh why are we concerned with it? <laughs> got a long ways to go until that happens. well we're always gonna be like it that's the, what it is in tech you know we got the ps5 when's the ps6 gonna come out when's you know PS6? that's that's always the way uh i think i'm for this oh wait that's the wrong thing <laughs> also why are we <laughs> muted still <laughs> Why are we muted? Uh, so why can't I hear that? I'm gonna keep that in the clip. This okay. is when I clip it out. So you know, we're not gonna be able to hear the backlog. Oh no! Backlog! No, backlog! 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 backlog. 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 <laughs> Nailed it! Now remind me to fix that later. <laughs> Uh, hey guys, welcome to the backlog. Uh, Will, what is the backlog? The backlog is a segment of the Wolf Den podcast where we go through our video game collection. Every game we've ever bought, we put into a little Excel spreadsheet. Today, we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. And what's 972 games, Bobby. And we're looking at number 453. 453. And that is Left 4 Dead 2 for the PC interesting okay yes for the pc yes i can tell you exactly why uh we got it on the pc okay we both bought copy this is way back in the day we were going we were it was on a family vacation we were on a plane we, were, we knew we were gonna fly and we both got left for dead for our respective macbooks because that's when oh. that's when uh valve first came to mac that's when steam first came to mac so we're like oh we'll both get left for dead and we'll wire up our laptops on the plane so we can play left for dead 2 on the plane it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> what do we think we were gonna land yeah yeah how would we have done that we would have no needed idea. uh i don't think you can peer to peer no so we would have needed like a, a router. router. Yeah, no, we just—I think we literally just like plugged in an Ethernet cable into our computers. And, and can you even host in the game? I have I, without like a server. I don't think so. We, moral of the story was we could not get it to work. Yeah, underscore says would have needed a crossover cable or router back then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow, what a what a mess up. <laughs> so we actually got it on Mac then. Yes, I also had it on Xbox 360. I know. I'm thinking of the Xbox 360 version. I remember playing the Xbox 360 yeah. version. Did I need people? Do I not have the version? Fuck. It's not on we the list. We definitely have the Xbox. We definitely do. Version. I think that's where I played it the most. Yeah. Obviously, we're counting both, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Because they're they're the both. same. Yeah. Uh, it's great that it was available on Mac, though. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be clear. Left for Dead too, a very good game, <laughs> very good game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we haven't seen anything from it after this. Um, and it did get copied into Oblivion. Yes. Uh, but like, like almost to a T, the formula exactly. So it got copied into Oblivion like many years after its yeah, peak, which there is was the strangest nothing. thing. There was nothing from Left for Dead two. For a really long time. Yeah. So, so Left 4 Dead uh, is just a four-player zombie. I don't want to say horde mode because you have no. to get from point A to point B. Yeah. Every level is get from point A to point B, and, and you got uh, the hordes of zombies in the way yes. of your uh, point A to point B. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's four players. It's They're NPCs if you don't fill the party, right? Correct. Or, or yeah. are they just yeah, not no, there? It, They're NPCs, yeah. Okay, and there's four different characters, so each person plays a character. The characters mm -hmm. don't have any special abilities or No, anything. they have different personalities, but like yeah. that doesn't affect gameplay at all. Yeah, so it's pretty bare bones. There's only a few types of zombies. You have the regular zombies, then you have the boomer guys, the ones yes. who are giant and explode. And then you have like the witch. Yes. Who screams and is really fast and really strong mm -hmm. and that's it right yeah yeah like, i believe so yeah, no that, no there's the boomer 
the hunter, the smoker, the tank, and the witch. Oh, okay. Uh, also, uh, three new... No, there's a lot more. There's also the charger, the spitter, and the jockey. Oh, that's a lot more than I thought. Yeah. Maybe I only played Left 4 Dead 1. <laughs> <laughs> well, Left 4 Dead 2 was the one that introduced uh, melee combat. To it. Okay. So you could pick up like melee weapons like you saw in the video, the crowbar, uh, swords, axes, okay. you know, anything you can get your hands on to try and fight through the zombie horde. Yeah, you're really just uh, shooting through hordes of zombies. Yeah. Uh, it, there's really not a lot to the game. No, it's really just, you know, you have your team. You have to try to get from safe house to safe house um, until you get to the end of the level. Uh, the big thing with this game, though, was the AI director. He was like, they basically gave a name to the uh, artificial intelligence programming of the zombies. They did that in the first game, but... Um, the second game, they had AI Director 2.0. It, uh, according to Wikipedia, the artificial intelligence system uh, drives gameplay by procedurally spawning enemies, weapons, and items based on players' performance at any given campaign. Uh, in Left 4 Dead 2, the director has uh, been improved to encourage more participation by players, forcing players through difficult gauntlets to reach safety. It also has the ability to alter elements of the level, such as the placement of walls, level layouts, lighting, and weather conditions, making each play session unique. It, I think the big draw to the game was just uh, the gameplay loop was fun. Just shooting yeah. stuff was fun. Yeah. There wasn't a lot to it. Uh, yeah. It didn't feel like there were a lot of different zombie types. You really, I mean, the whole time you're just shooting the same sort of yeah. I mean, low-level um, zombie the whole it's time. It's very chaotic. So, like, when you and three friends... It becomes so very like, chaotic yeah. because there are a doesn't lot of matter, zombies. doesn't like, matter what type of zombie you're attacking. You just know to stop the zombie. It also doesn't feel like there's a lot of different weapon types or anything. Right. Uh, but, yes, you could also pick up your friends and stuff. Like, yeah. if, they, if they fall, if, if, if they get hurt too much and whatever. Yeah. Um, I think people just really liked playing with their friends. This was a great mindless multiplayer game to play with other people. Yeah. Uh, this got copied into Oblivion. I, I Well, people were missing Left 4 Dead 2 for a long time. And then, what, like five, six years after this game came out? Yeah. Some clones started to come out. And mm -hmm. the clones copied the formula to a T. Yeah. With the zombie types. With uh, the four players, with the get from point A to point B. Yeah. Uh, all of that stuff. Uh, and none of them were that great. None mm. of them really captured the the charm of Left 4 Dead. Also, I think that maybe they were a little outdated. Like, like yeah. Uh, they didn't innovate on the idea at all. Like, if there was a Left 4 Dead, if there was a Left 4 Dead 3 right now, mm -hmm. it would do some things a little different. It wouldn't just be this exact formula. It would yeah. be, like, a little bit different. Uh, and they didn't capture that. I think what is kind of satiating people is Call of Duty Zombies. Call of yeah. Duty Zombies. Uh, That's actually a very similar, kind of similar formula. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, people love that. Yeah. So I think that's what people have sort of moved on to mm -hmm. now. Um, but no, this was like the mindless multiplayer game. I PC do. And Xbox. I'm looking at the Wikipedia page for it. And I do actually remember there was... A controversy when this game came out because Left 4 Dead 1 came out in 2008 and this game came out a year later. And people oh. were like upset that like Valve was no longer supporting Left 4 Dead 1. They were going to move all resources to Left 4 Dead 2. So it was a big boycott of Left 4 Dead 2. That'll that, show them. That guess is a what, little quick. Guess what happened? Everybody started playing Left 4 Dead 2. And, and they this started, is way more popular. Yeah. <laughs> and they started moving like the characters and like the levels from Left 4 Dead 1 over to Left 4 Dead 2. Yeah. So just go over to the new game and play that. Valve has gotten worse with that. Uh, yes. With Counter Strike Two or, mm -hmm. or or CS Go Two. Yeah. Uh, they just straight up replaced the old game. Right. You can't even play the old game anymore. You have to play the new version, which broke Mac support because yeah. CS Go Two is not on Mac. So if you had CS Go on Mac. Uh, you just can't play it anymore, right? Because it's been replaced. So apparently, we have this for both Steam and Xbox. Yes, very interesting. I have to. I, I, you know, next time we go to our parents' house, I gotta check the archives because we definitely have. We it. definitely have for it, sure. But have like, it. Why is it not on the list? I would recommend playing this game. Yes, uh, but only play it if you're gonna play it with other people. Yes, it's uh, definitely a multiplayer. Do not game. play this by yourself. It 
actually sucks by yourself. It's just boring. Yeah. I played it by myself a little bit and mm-hmm. it's fine, but it's boring. It, yeah. Playing with other people is fun. It's chaotic. It's it, it, it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's good. If you're a fan of Call of Duty Zombies, maybe don't play this. I don't know if you're going to like it. Yeah. But uh, if you're interested in Left 4 Dead 2 and you've never played it before, give it a try. Thanks for watching the backlog. Uh, come to a podcast. See you later. Bye. Bye. All right. All right. I've added it to the 360 list. Oh, okay. Oh. Thank you. And now you get to cross it off. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's the next news we're going to talk about? The next news is Bungie is targeting a $40 price for Marathon. I'm hearing a lot of terrible things about Bungie. Uh, yeah. You'd think I would be happy about a $40 price tag. Yeah. Because that's nice and cheap. Yeah, but... uh. I feel like that's the kiss of death. That's them <laughs> valuing this yeah. low. That means they know it's low value. Yeah. Uh, multiple sources tell the game post that Bungie is considering a $40 uh, price launch price for Marathon, its upcoming PvP extraction shooter. It's been well over a year since Bungie announced its first non-Destiny game, Marathon, originally revealed in May of 2023. Uh, this game, this title is shaping up to be a quite different from what players might have expected initially. Uh, according to several sources familiar with the project, Bungie appears to be targeting a $40 price tag for Marathon, opting for a pay-to-play premium model rather than following the free-to-play model seen in many other modern shooters. The game post understands that it's likely uh, that discussions between Bungie and Sony have taken place around Marathon's pricing strategy after the disastrous launch of Sony's latest live service game, Concord, which also launched at $40 but was shut down after just two weeks. However, sources confirmed that the $40 price point was definitely in the cards. So it's not confirmed, but they are like aiming to get that. Why that price point though? Why $40? So I think it's definitely because Helldivers was successful and that was $40. Okay. And that's the only reason. I think Sony was like, hey, we just had a free-to-play game that blew up and nobody liked it. No, it wasn't free-to-play. It was $40. Oh, it was also $40? Concord was $40, oh. yeah. Never mind. Yeah, that's that's what they're talking about. Maybe you could have. Maybe they could have fixed it if it was free. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking maybe the scope changed. Maybe they're like, this game's going to be a lot smaller than we thought. We want to put more resources into the next Destiny right. because that's a short-fire hit. So uh, let's just sell it for $40. I don't know. Uh, I hope that it releases on PC and PlayStation like oh, I think it's, does. I think it's least. releasing on everything. I think it's even been releasing on Xbox. Oh, great. So. That, that's great. I'm concerned because yeah. uh, I think a lot of... There's been a lot of shakeups at Bungie. Uh, yeah. I think that they're not doing too hot, and I think they're making some weird decisions. Mm-hmm. So I'm worried that this $40 price is because they don't think the game is going to sell well. Or, or they think the game isn't as big of a scope as probably they won't be as profitable. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what the, what the reason is. I yeah. also saw a tweet talking about how a lawyer for Bungie said that uh, they weren't making any money, and then when they got bought by PlayStation, PlayStation was like, "You need to make. You need to. Right. We need to tell you how to make money because you don't know how to make money." Yeah. So this could be Sony being like, you should do this because we think that would be better. That would make more money for you. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, but this concerns me. I'm interested in Marathon. I think the, uh, uh, the initial trailer looked fucking awesome. Right. I love the style of the game. I don't hate extraction shooters. I think it could be fine. Mm-hmm. I like the original Destiny. I don't know. I, I'm excited to try this. Uh, but news like this concerns me right yeah same I, i'm happy that i get to pay less for it <laughs> but it makes me think that they're undervaluing the game yeah hey we got a raid from garth vader uh bob we got breaking news okay snes uh switch online games are just announced yo they love doing that during the show i know uh, four classic Super Nintendo titles are now available on Switch on for Switch Online members. Starting off with Battletoads, Double Dragon, Big Run, Cosmo Gang, The Puzzle, and Kunio Kun no Dodgeball Daiyo uh, Zeni Shogu. Nailed right. it. All right. Uh, okay. 
Oh, Battletoads and Double Dragon. Yeah, that was the crossover game. They nice. Did. I actually play that. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if that was in, ever re-released. I don't know if that's in the Rare Replay collection or like the Double Dragon collection. So it's cool that it's on Switch Online. So Kunioku no Dodgeball Dayo Zen Shugo. Mm -hmm. That is Streets of Rage Dodgeball? No, that is um, River City Ransom. River City Ransom Dodgeball. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Uh, okay. Uh, then we got Cosmo Gang Puzzle. I'm repeating it because I'm showing it on right. the screen. Uh, okay. That, I've never heard of that. That looks weird. That looks like a Tetris-style Fallen Blocks game. And we got Big Run, which Big Run. looks like... What does this look like? Outrun? Uh, yeah, it looks like Outrun. Yeah. Outrun. Was that Sega? That was Sega. Oh, that's why. Yeah. They needed a copy. Mm hmm Okay. There's some pretty decent games there. Yeah. Nothing like, you know, that's going to blow me away. Uh, I'm surprised Battletoads Double Dragon. Yeah. Surprised by that. Surprised by who, that. Who made that? I don't think it was Rare. Because Rare, is, Rare owns Battletoads. I just want to say that uh, the Kunio Kun dodgeball game roughly translates to it's Kunio's dodgeball. Assemble everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rare developed it. Okay. And it was published by Trade West, Nintendo, and Sony Image Soul. I think Trade West owned the Double Dragon rights. Apparently, for SNES, it was Sony Image Soul that published it. Okay. Or it could have been trade with. I don't right. know. It could have also been trade with. Uh, okay. Boy Stainy, thanks for the two dollars on YouTube. If Switch Two looks like thumbnail, will shit myself. That is a uh, in the thumbnail. There is a dual screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. So cool. Check out Switch Two online games. When is yep. it? When are they coming? Right now. Oh my god. Available now. Go get them right yeah. now. Go oh, double dragon right now. Uh, Rockstar. Oh, I put this here. Rockstar. Uh, I didn't even know you were able to play Grand Theft Auto V online on the Steam Deck. Yes. That's crazy. Well, you can't anymore. So I guess don't get your hopes up. <laughs> uh, this I was just scrolling through Reddit and I found this. This is on our Linux gaming. Every post on Linux gaming today is about this. Everybody's fucking right. pissed about this. Um, so I guess I can summarize. Uh, they added Battle Eye anti cheat to Grand Theft Auto V, mm -hmm. and that only affects the online. Uh, and Battle Eye is supported on Linux, okay, but the developer has to enable it. So the same thing's happening with Destiny, apparently. Destiny yeah. 2 uses the same anti cheat and does not work on Steam Deck because it. They don't enable it for Linux. Right. Uh, so Rockstar just randomly implemented this anti-cheat years after the game's out. They just yeah. made an anti-cheat for it. Uh, and that made it not work on not just Steam Deck, but all Linux devices. Yeah. It just doesn't work on Linux anymore. So a bunch of users have been playing this game on Steam Deck, and all of a sudden they just can't anymore. And when they reach out to Rockstar support, Rockstar says, uh, sorry, uh, but we don't support that anymore. So, see if I could find the actual, uh, oh, I have it in a tweet. Let me pull the tweet. According to the Grand Theft Auto V, um, store page, it's still playable. Yeah, so, so the, single, the player single player, is, player yeah. is playable, yeah. Uh, a reply that somebody got says, thank you for contacting Rockstar support. Unfortunately, we are unable to change this. Linux is no longer supported for the GTA 5 game, which is wrong. GTA right. 5 still works on Linux. It just, uh, you can't play online. Yeah. Please let us know if you need any additional stuff. And then there were other statements by Rockstar that basically doubled down and was like, no, it's not going to work. Sorry. Mm -hmm. You, you you can't you can't play your fucking yeah. game anymore. <laughs> so, I mean, Steam's return policy is if you play the game for more than two hours, you can't return yeah. the game. 
I'm hoping that they enable uh, refunds for people who have a Steam Deck yeah. and, and want a refund for this game in particular because there's people who have been playing and just all of a sudden will not be able to play their game anymore. Yeah. And there's people who have also purchased it from Epic and Epic Game Store also could work on Steam right. Deck. So uh, this is kind of really fucked up and there's mm-hmm. uh, this, this is just something that we have to deal with now with uh, digital games. Game companies can just make it so yeah. that you cannot play the game anymore. And, and then there's nothing you can do about it. And that's why crazy people spend $80 on a physical drive for their PlayStation 5s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a lot of ways to prevent this. Uh, mm-hmm. The biggest way would be to have some sort of legislation saying that if you take away the ability for me to play the game that I purchased, I should get my money back. Mm-hmm. You know? It's uh, fucked up. So there were people in the comments saying that BattleEye anti-cheat works for Linux and it's as easy as just flipping a switch just enabling Linux support in your game and then that's it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a game developer but I'd imagine that uh, supporting Linux means you're going to have to run tests and update the game based on the Linux version too. Yeah. So you're, gonna, you're basically releasing the game for a whole nother platform. So it's not, I would imagine it's not as easy as just flipping a switch, but the issue here is that the game ran fine and people were playing it like that. Yeah. And now you took it away from them. Yeah. That's the problem. That's a huge problem. Does that screw all the online mods and unofficial servers? Uh, probably, uh, I'd imagine the anti cheat isn't going to work for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a problem across the board, even for windows. And then I, I tweeted about it, and of course it turned into a Windows handheld versus versus Steam Deck fight. Yeah. Uh, anyway, good Steam news. Uh, Steam Family Library is out of beta. Yes. Uh, we did talk about this on the podcast when it was in beta. We've been using this. Yes. I, I... Well, no, okay. because when the when the when we entered the beta program, it wasn't showing up on my Steam Deck. Oh, I was getting it. You were getting it? Didn't I get Spec Ops because of you? Yeah, yeah, I but got on it. PC, it was it was on your Steam Deck because I couldn't see your library on my Steam Deck. I got too many devices, <laughs> so I actually don't know. I'm pretty sure it was a Steam Deck. Okay, because I couldn't see your games on my Steam Deck. Okay, but now I can. Following okay. a beta test earlier this year, Steam Families is now live with a new way for relatives to uh, be connected on the gaming uh, portable. I might have a beta. My beta is enabled on my Steam Deck. Uh, I might okay. have beta versions. Of okay. That might be the problem. Uh, up to five family members can be invited into a group, which will grant access to shared family libraries. Each person can create their own save files and collect their own achievements for the games in a family library. The marquee development with the new family feature is that multiple people within a group uh, will be able to play games from the shared library at the same time. If you And if you own oh. multiple copies of a game, then multiple people can be playing that title at once. The caveat with family sharing is that a game developer may opt uh, to not not support the feature steam maintains a list of the titles that are currently uh have family sharing enabled uh steam families also folds in features of the old steam family view where the adults can monitor and limit what the children and the group can do on the platform any adult in the family will be able to restrict kids access to the steam store uh, communities or chat they uh, can also set playtime limits improve extensions to the limits and recover a child's account if the password is lost so wait it says uh, the new family feature is that multiple people within the group will be able to play games from the shared library at the same time. Okay, so that just means I can play your copy of Left 4 Dead 2 and you can play your copy of Grand Theft Auto. Yes. But if we both wanted to play your copy of Grand Theft Auto, it wouldn't work. Correct. Okay, that, that, makes, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Previously... Uh, you can't use your Steam account in two places at once. Yes. It wouldn't let you run mm-hmm. the game twice, which has kind of screwed me up sometimes. Um, because I like to, you know, I'm doing like a lot of benchmarks and I can only run the 3D Mark software in one place at yeah. a time, which is annoying. Um, so this is great. We've been using it. Yeah. I, I have it. Uh, I don't 
think I've really uh, played any of your games, though. Yeah, I haven't played any of your games yet. I keep seeing it, though. I keep going through my library and going, oh, I have that now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I keep looking because like, some of the games that you have are on my wish list. I'm like, oh, it's on sale. Oh, but Bob has it. <laughs> yeah, we have it already. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of awesome. Yeah. Um. So I saw on like Valve's uh, YouTube channel that this came out. And I yeah. was like, wait, wait, I've been using that. Why is that? What? Yeah, I, it was I didn't beta, realize. Yeah. I didn't realize it's out of yeah. uh, beta. But it's great if you have a, even just anybody that you share games with. Yeah. Uh, just, just make a family library. Yeah. Uh, you can swap families uh, once and then you have to wait a year yeah. to, to do it again. So uh, don't be shy. Yeah. Go <laughs> share your library with somebody, even if they're not in your family. And then you can always leave and swap yeah after a couple days or, or so um it's a great little feature that they've yeah made for themselves okay uh now we got a bunch of rapid fire news we'll go okay through. uh tony hawk is making a new game Ta oh, he's talking to activision again uh speaking on good uh mythical kitchen the legendary skater said that there was something planned for the anniversary because it's the 25th anniversary of the tony hawk franchise this year uh, Jesus Christ. Will. I know. God, I'm so fat. Uh, <laughs> I wish I could tell you more, but I can tell you that I've been talking to Activision again. We are working on something, Hawk said. Um, it will be something the fans will truly appreciate. It. Tony Hawk claimed in 2022 that a second collection of remakes following Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 was planned until Vicarious Vision was absorbed into Activision entirely. So if you remember correctly, Tony Hawk's 1 and 2 came out. It was great. Everybody loved it. And then Activision said, Vicarious Visions, stop working on Tony Hawk 3 and 4. Go become uh, Blizzard Albany and work on World of Warcraft until you die. So Was that back in the day or was that the remake? That was a remake. Okay. Vicarious okay. Visions did Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. The remake. The remake. Okay. It was a hit. It was successful. They started work on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4. Remakes of those, and then Activision said, "No, yeah, do do not make us money. Do not bring us critical acclaim. Go become a Blizzard support studio. We know what we're doing." To be fair, those games make a lot of money. I know, but they're not Tony Hawk, so right. I don't care. Wouldn't mind a new skateboard game. Yeah, wouldn't mind at all. Uh, Next, Annapurna Interactive staff all quit. Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, Bloomberg reports that the entire staff of Annapurna Interactive, the gaming division of Megan Ellison's Annapurna Motion Pictures, has resigned after failing to convince Ellison to let them spin off its games division into a new company. Uh, all 25 members of Annapurna Interactive's team collectively resigned, said former president Nathan Gray. That's insane. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was one of the hardest decisions we've ever had to make, and we did not take this action lightly. Annapurna spokesperson told Bloomberg that existing games and projects will remain under the company. Annapurna didn't immediately uh, reply to a request for comments from The Verge. That's so, wild. It's it's uh, it's a nice change of pace from like when you hear a gaming company like people are leaving, they get laid off, and that's sad. But these people like took a stand and just fucking quit. Yeah, <laughs> like that's kind of rad in a way like i'm sorry that they lost their jobs and whatnot but there's like nah man out of here we got principles yeah so i always thought annapurna interactive was an indie studio and they kind of are but they are an arm of a movie studio yeah yeah so uh they have you know a corporate overlord yeah um so they wanted to make a new studio and their corporate overlord said no so they were like okay we're just gonna do it anyway yeah. Uh, there's no confirmation that they have left to make a new studio. Correct. I'd imagine that they did. Yeah. All the games that they make seem like a labor of love. It seems they seem like, you know, small little indie games. Yeah. They uh, seem like they're a tight knit group of people. Yeah. And they will probably move on to go do something. I mean, else. it looked like Annapurna Pictures, the film arm, you know, which also has made like very popular, successful, like indie style films. I've been wanting to basically use the games division as an IP farm to make more movies and TV shows. Yeah. So that's what the, the remedy contract was for Alan Wake and control. Uh, according to this article, they were going to make a movie based on stray. That's, dumb. you know, cat game. That game sucked. I don't <laughs> care what anybody, I don't know why that, I mean, yeah, I know why it was so popular because yeah. it had a cat in it and that's right. it. It wasn't that great. So neon white though. 
fucking slaps. Yeah. That game is sick. So basically, it just seems like they didn't want to be a content farm, which I understand. You know, yeah. I don't want to be a content farm. But they, I mean, they've been allowed to make such unique games. Yeah. That all did pretty decent. So do that. Let them do that some more. And if you don't, if you don't let them have their creative freedom, they're going to resign and leave. Yeah. Good luck finding new people to work at your studio. Um, next, Unity, a major game engine behind countless games, abandoned its controversial runtime feed. Uh, we talked about this a million years ago. Well, we talked about they were going to implement it and that they were going to walk it back, but they never walked it back. Uh, they finally walked it back. Okay. Unity is scrapping its runtime fee uh, and returning to its previous a seat-based subscription model with a price increases for Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise users. This decision announced by Unity CEO Matthew Bromberg in a blog post comes after extensive backlash from developers. The runtime fee introduced last year sought to charge developers based on the number of installations once specific thresholds were met. The policy faced widespread criticism, leading to protests and threats of abandonment from the developer community. The fallout contributed to the resignations of former CEO John Riccatello in 2023 and Unity Create head Mark Witten in in May of 2024. So yeah, the the du- the douchebag who wanted to charge you for reloading uh your weapon in Battlefront um <laughs> was the one who wanted to charge you for installing your game on multiple uh platforms and he's gone. So Unity finally decided to walk that back. Imagine having to put your credit card in. Yeah, to reload your gun. Yeah. That that's the world he wants you to live in. Yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago uh these game engines were the g- game engines are weird because they're yeah. free most of them have been free up to a certain amount if you sell a certain amount of games they like come knocking at your door yeah. and be like hey give us money uh unity implemented a controversial one uh and now they're not doing it anymore yeah correct uh you However, Unity Personal will remain free with revenue and funding ceiling increased from $100,000 to $200,000, giving developers more flexibility before being subjected to Unity's fees. Uh, So if you make $200,000, then you owe Unity. Yeah. Uh, Oh, the Made with Unity splash screen will be optional for games developed with Unity 6. Interesting. Starting January 1st, 2025, Unity Pro will see an 8% increase, raising the annual subscription fee to $2,200 per seat. Um, Unity Enterprise will experience a 25% increase with new minimum subscription requirements for customers generating over $25 million in annual revenue. These changes will apply to new and existing subscriptions from that date. So they are increasing the price of Unity Pro and Unity Enterprise. So that's how they're going to make their money that they need. So I was looking it up. The biggest competitor to Unity is Unreal Engine. Mm -hmm. Unreal Engine 5.4. Yes. uh, This was as of March of this year. Uh, There's a new pricing plan as of April, I think. Okay. Unreal Engine 5.4. Uh, uh, per seat pricing plan distinct from its existing royalty based model oh so this is different like this is another option okay so i don't think they're getting rid of the old one so there's a the new plan uh non-game developers can get an annual subscription one thousand eight hundred and fifty dollars per seat to use this unreal engine as opposed to the royalty based model it uses for game developers. Oh, huh? What's the difference? <laughs> the company. Oh, maybe people who do CG work. Yeah. The company announced the changes to its payment scheme last year, and now it's providing details on the plan, which will come into effect with the release of Unreal Engine version 5.4 in late April. The changes don't apply to game developers, though, who will continue to pay for access to Epic's tools via a 5% royalty on products that earn over $1 million in lifetime gross revenue. Okay. So if you're a game developer, it seems like you only have to pay uh, for Unreal Engine a 5% royalty if you make over a $1 million lifetime. Right. So I hope that's not like, you know, like what if I have a game that's, 
out for 10 years yeah on the 10th year that's when it makes a million dollars yeah then they're are they gonna give me a bill for <laughs> for fifty thousand dollars yeah that i might not be able to pay that yeah <laughs> you know um so let this be a lesson. Don't be a game developer. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd imagine most indie developers aren't going to have to worry about this. Uh, these ca- revenue caps are pretty high. So if yeah. you're just a guy who's like just learning how to, how to like be a game developer, use whatever you want. Yeah. It doesn't matter. All right, next news. Xbox is bringing back friend requests. Here's a feature I didn't know went away. Xbox has announced it's bringing friend requests back to Xbox uh, after more than a decade with its new friends and followers experience set to go live uh, for insiders this week. Xbox hasn't had friend requests since 2013 when, as part of the transition from the 360 to the Xbox One, Microsoft included a social media style system making uh sorry a social media style system making it possible to follow activity feeds without the need to explicit uh for explicit approval if the other party reciprocates a follower becomes a friend so both can chat message and game soon though xbox will introduce a more traditional two-way invite only uh friend request system that microsoft says will give users more control and flexibility that'll sit alongside the existing one-way follower system so users can still easily follow players clubs or game feeds i did not know this feature wasn't a thing anymore. Yeah. So how do I get you on my list? I think you could do that, right? I think the way it works is like, let's say we, let's say we didn't know each other and we just exchanged gamer tags, right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't, as of now, I don't send you a friend request. I follow you. Like I would follow somebody on Twitter. You would have to follow me back. That's really dumb. Yeah. Cause that's not, what anybody wants no, to do. No, yeah. I think it was more so so like you could follow like specific games or like yeah. streamers that you like and whatnot. But that's that's just weird. The reason we don't know about this is because we switched from Xbox 360 to PlayStation yeah, and I was, 4. I was looking at like my friends list and it's all friends I made during the 360 era. Yeah. So it's like... So we missed this transition yeah. when it happened. This was them trying to be a social media. That's really weird. Yeah. Uh, Flappy Bird's back. Hooray! But is it? Oh, some controversy with this one. Uh, mobile video game phenomenon Flappy Bird is set to return 10 years after the creator pulled it offline. Uh, Flappy Bird is set to return with an expanded version aimed for a uh, launch by the end of October across multiple platforms, including web browsers, uh, an iOS and Android version planned for release next year. But this new Flappy Bird isn't from... Uh, original designer Dong Nguyen. Uh, it's from the Flapping Bird Foundation, which is described as a new team of passionate fans committed to sharing the game with the world. Uh, uh, that's... That's fucked up. Yeah. You uh, are not fans, then. <laughs> The Flappy Bird Foundation says it acquired the official Flappy Bird trademark from Game Tech Holdings LLC, the U.S. company that appears to have wrestled the trademark from Win, as well as the rights for the original game and the character uh, from Pew Pew vs. Cactus, the mobile game that supposedly ar- the originally inspired the Flappy Bird character. Uh, F- Flappy Bird Foundation is already talking about Fla- future Flappy Bird, uh, which will debut with new game modes, characters, progressions, and massive multiplayer challenges. Listen, there's a lot of money to be had here. Oh, there's I, a lot of money. I think this will be pretty successful. Uh, I can't imagine the games will be any good. And Dong Win w- wanted this to go away. Yeah. He made the game, then regretted it yeah. because how popular it got and said, I don't like that people are playing this game as much as they are. Uh, and then he deleted it. Yeah. Uh, he does not want this game to be out there, so fucking stop. <laughs> it's not just that he doesn't want the game to be out there. He specifically said on Twitter, "No, I have, uh, I have no related to, uh, I have not related with their game. I did not sell anything. I also don't support crypto." Oh, is this a crypto thing? It's a crypto thing. <laughs> oh God, help us! It uh, never ends. What is it? Uh. F- I'm going to follow Don Wynn. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Hit the backlog button. Didn't even know I had a backlog button. There's Getting something fishy Don about Wynn the Flappy Bird revival. 
I want to get the exact the, the exact thing because yeah, they they this is like a crypto farm and like an NFT thing. Here we go on the official page. Uh, the legendary Flappy Bird is back with some high fly and will fly higher than ever on Solana as it soars into Web three. And artists, developers, and creators can build, play, and Fuck. earn from the legendary Flappy Bird IP. And Flappy Bird will now be the world's first open source community owned Web two and Web three game. The page seems to suggest that the original plan for the project uh, revolved around cryptocurrency and Web three. Some people may refer to these kinds of projects as grifts. What a bunch of just absolute dog shit yeah like just saying a bunch of nonsense the the simplest game in the world yeah. and you gotta load it with web free nonsense it's it's just a a way to make money like if yeah. you told me that you were just getting the flappy bird license and you were gonna just make a new game i'd be like all right it makes sense you would yeah do that to capitalize on it and make a lot of money off yeah. of it. I feel like you could make a lot of money off that. Yeah. Then you start throwing all the Web3 and crypto bullshit into it, and it's like, alright, now you're going over. Yeah, on. now this is clearly, like, verging into scam territory. Yeah, I mean, it already was, yeah. but now it's, you're, you're overboard. Yeah. Uh, oh, this lead, I was gonna bring this up. This leads right into the EA investors call. Yeah, um, I swapped this out for another article. I had another article here, but this touches on what that article okay. which was, so I just figured... Rapid fire, uh, EA had a, their investors call. Uh, all major companies do this, and here are some of the highlights. Uh, the Sims 5 is not happening, but the franchise isn't ending. So good news for all you Sims fans out there. because there's a billion dollars worth of DLC for Sims 4. Yeah. It's like a platform now. Yeah. It's not even like a game anymore. So they're just going to keep updating and improving Sims 4, which, sure, whatever. Uh, the Sims movie is is happening however and margot robbie is involved because sure why not they're trying to make like the barbie movie, yeah it's gonna make barbie happen again uh star wars jedi 3 is an active development and it will be the end of the series uh i like that yeah there should be an end yes to it because this, this is definitely not a story that can continue yeah um we learned a lot more about the next major battlefield game this is what i originally had in the keep okay um so real quick uh because vince zampala uh studio had talked to ign about the future of battlefield um and he basically wants to make it more like battlefield 3 quote i mean if you look back to the peak of the pinnacle of battlefield that's battlefield 3 battlefield 4 era where everything was modern uh, and i think we have to get back to the core of what battlefield is and to do amazingly well and then we'll see where it goes from there so basically they want to try to make battlefield 3 happen again because yeah. they feel like that was the last time people actually liked Battlefield. Okay. Uh, and, that, that's fine. Yeah. I'm fine with that. And lastly, uh, the Skate reboot will be launching in 2025. I am excited. For that. that looked very cool. I hope it's good because it looks bad. It, well, it's like they barely did anything to it yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, it looks like it's going to be like an online like grindathon type game. They're trying to make it like a massively multiplayer game. Uh, hey, I'm not opposed. I see a lot of people on TikTok just playing Skate, I think, 3. Yeah. Going for wild, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like wild, like, tricks. Like, like, like going through a little tiny hole in a yeah. building or something. Um, there was something else in here. Like, the EA guy said something about, oh, they're embracing uh, generative AI. Yes, I did see that. I didn't see that. I didn't see an article for that. I saw a tweet about that. And then the tweet also posted up when uh, the same guy said that uh, NFTs and crypto will be part of our future. Yes, that's yeah, that's what I saw. Uh, yeah, AI is just like the Web3 bullshit. Like, yeah. there, I mean, I guess the difference is... The like, difference is it's easier to impress idiots with. Yeah. 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 Because you could just like, hey, look what I can do. Press a button. It comes out and they're like, oh, that's so cool. Well, so the difference between crypto and NFTs and AI is that there is actual s s some usefulness out of AI. Right. Not that it's it, just the usefulness is overblown. Right. That's the that's the issue. Whereas NFT and crypto. There is no use. There's not yeah. a single use case for it. And it's proven. Yeah. That. 
worthless. Yeah. Um, but man, I should have gotten in on the crypto scheme like immediately. I could have made so much. Money. I hey, I tried. I was I was there for it. NFTs immediately smelled the bullshit. Yeah, that was obvious. That was obvious. Yeah. That wasn't. But think about the crypto. Money. I was like decentralized market. I hate the government. <laughs> but think about all the money we could have made selling pictures of. I don't know, rats as <laughs> NFTs, man. Should have gotten in early. Yeah. Scammed all of our beautiful fans. To the moon. We should make our own Lunchables. There you go. That's <laughs> And put in the fine print that they can't sue us if they eat it. Is that a, is that a thing? A thing. <laughs> that sounds like a, like a regulatory thing. Like, you gotta just put that there. I guess, but I mean, like... I don't think real Lunchables has that in the fine print. <laughs> Logan Paul said, uh, Lunchables have lead in it. Ours doesn't have lead or something like yeah. that. Wait till you find out that theirs also has lead. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't add, like, that's like a California thing, right? They have to put on everything that this may contain lead or something. Yeah, it's like, uh, I forgot what the prop is, but like could contain this or that, that's a carcinogen or it whatever. It turns out just everything has lead yeah, in it. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah, you just... Yeah. You're just fucked. Yeah. So, like when people, like when doctors tell you you need to have more iron in your blood, they mean like actual iron, the yeah. metal. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. Iron your clothes. Yeah. That'll fix everything. Oh, God help us. Uh, let's do this. Quit right. of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. So this is a rare one. A rare official Nintendo tweet. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> more money, more problems. Hashtag Super Mario Party Jamboree. That's funny. And it is Daisy chasing Waluigi. This is funny because I just thought it was funny them using a rap lyric and having yeah. Daisy chase Waluigi. I didn't realize this is a Biggie and Puff Daddy song. Yeah. And Puff Daddy is was oh, arrested yesterday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that might be why they did this. Yep. Some intern at freaking uh, <laughs> Nintendo was like, I got a great idea. Oh, I got, I got something. So, hats off to you. Yeah. Intern at Nintendo of America. Uh, all right. Now, we'll talk to you guys. Yes. Start with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Gotta say, making great time right now. Yeah. Uh, we got Mr. Chaotic Penguin who says Sony is out here thinking PS5 Pro means PS5 Pro Fit. Oh, profit. got him. Profit, get it? Got him. Michael Chapman. Hey, Bob, just wanted to say I love you in Spider Man Homecoming as the team. Yeah, that's, I get that reference. What's his name? Martin Starr. Martin Starr. Ooms of Doom says, when I'm playing my PS5, I'm thinking Spider-Man 2 is good, but if I spent another $700 to get the PS5 Pro, I won't be able to play the game because I got it physically. That would make it a 10 out of 10. If you could play the game physically. Well, you can. You just got to spend the $80 to get a hard drive, to get a disk drive. And you'd be set. So it's really not seven hundred dollars. It's seven hundred and eighty dollars. I'm confused by this <laughs> because he's saying when he's playing his PS5. Yeah, he's saying Spider-Man Two is good, but I could play it on the Pro, but I can't play it on the Pro. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Oh, that's because the whole episode we kept saying, "I'm well, I'm saying this is good, but if only." Yeah. Da, da, da. It's a me, Eric says, long time commenter, first time listener here. That's that other way around. Can't be true. <laughs> I wonder what will be on the PS5 Pro box that will be a lie. They will remove in a revision later, like the original PS5. All PlayStation games come to PC now, so just use that money on a gaming PC and get better performance than the Pro could offer, anyways, with the added bonus of being able to upgrade components as time goes on. About time Sony whipped out its big old pisser. PSS. Yes. I, I keep seeing that and I keep thinking of USSR. Yep. Yeah. So yep. communism. It's here to stay. So 
Yeah, I uh, have been considering. I saw an article from IGN saying these are the parts that you need to build your own PlayStation oh, yeah. Five it's the, Pro. Yes, sir. It's a communist PlayStation. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I saw an article from IGN saying here's the components you need to build your own PlayStation Five. Right. Uh, for around the same price. Uh, also, I talked to the Fox, and he had he thinks he could build something that's almost identical for nine hundred dollars. Which okay. I think is a, not a bad deal at yeah. all. Um, so I've been talking to him about that. Because that would be really cool to be able to do something. But it won't be as small. Right. Making it as small would make it a lot more money. Yeah. Um, what's going to be on the box? That's a lie. I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about how this one's going to be 8K. Or it's going to have up to 8K now. The last one did. Yeah. So th- it doesn't fucking mean anything until we get a game that's actually 8K. Yeah. So that's your lie on the front of the box. Positive Takes says, did you all forget about the pandemic? It isn't as though there's no reason this generation has been rough. That's a big reason why the generation. Yeah. No, that's probably like the reason the generation has been rough. Yeah. I uh, have not forgotten. But also, hey, also though, sales were crazy during the pandemic. Yeah. So companies profited sales were crazy for because they had they all had the systems already and the games already yeah, yeah. when the, the games that launched that year did mm-hmm. fucking crazy but then they just needed to take that money and bank it for a little bit yeah. knowing that they were going to be in a recession for a little bit but they probably didn't and instead they just fired everybody mm-hmm. now we're in the chat yes sir griffin whatever his name is says will i was thinking about your argument uh, I can't read this. I was thinking about your argument buying games on disc, but that would not have saved you with GTA Online shit. Also, more and more often, the disc doesn't even contain the full game. The best way to preserve your library is getting your games on GOG DRM free. Second best is probably Steam with a 20 plus year track record of unbroken library support. Yeah, I think. You know, the problem with a lot of modern games, especially from the PS4, Xbox One era forward, is that the disc is just glorified of DRM. Yeah. Like, the disc doesn't even actually have game data on it. It just it signals to the system that, like, oh, we need to download this game from our servers to the hard drive. Yeah, I don't love that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. I agree. Like, I don't think that's good either. You know, I think... You know, back in the day, you put the disc in and it would read from the disc. There are very few games that won't work from the disc, though. I know. There's like, I, I'd like to think, like, I thought there were a lot. There were a lot of games, or at least like a notable amount of games where you put the disc in and it just downloads. Yeah. Uh, but there's almost none. Yeah. I think the only one is one of the Call of Duties. Right. And like, that's it. And then there's stuff like Mega Man Legacy Collection, like the, the if you get the two pack, the second one is download only. Right. Like that's not. Yeah. That's it says it on the box that you're not getting. That. Well, I know like the game data that's on the disc of Star Wars Battlefront Two is significantly different from where, like if you were to download the game because yeah. now it's like a completely different game. Yeah. Yeah. But. The fact of the matter is physical buying physical is still like viable from a game's preservation. Yes. Uh, There might be like a game breaking bug that you need a day one download for or whatever. Yeah. Uh, But uh, these companies could rip it from you at any moment. Uh, You said valve has a, has a perfect 20 year unbroken track record of digital library support. Fucking. They have a good track record, but, but it's not that perfect. That doesn't stop companies from t- delisting themselves off of stuff. Yes. Like, exactly. uh, like uh, Rockstar just made it so you can't fucking play your game. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, Spec Ops The Line, you currently can't play on Steam. You can't buy on Steam right now. Alpha Protocol, you yeah, can't you, play on Steam right now. If you own it, you can download it. Yeah, if you own that's it, you can he, download it. But saying. like, if you don't, yeah. then you're shit out of luck. Yeah. So none of these are 100% fail safe. Yeah. Uh, you 100% can get a G14 
2024 on sale for $1,000. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, sadly, but OLED and a full on PC laptop. I don't know what a G14. Hmm. Oh, it's an ROG Zephyrus. Oh, yeah, I saw this. I've seen this. That looks pretty cool. What's that have to do with anything? You know, you're talking to somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> or is that just what you think would be like equivalent to a PlayStation uh PlayStation 5 Pro? Uh Josh C. Gorey with 10 A's. I guess that's Australian. Yes. Hey, Wolf Bros, what's up? Nice to see you again. Good Smile Company has released the Astrobot and Android. Are either of you interested? And how is the new game? Thanks a bunch, mates. So it's a re-release, I think. Of which one? The Astrobot and Android. Okay. Because they made one a while ago, and then they re-released it for the new game. And I went to buy it, and I think I didn't have my credit card with me, so I saved it in a tab and then never bought it. So I almost did. No, you know what it was? I, okay. I, I had it on my phone. I said, if this is less than $50, I'll buy it right now. And I clicked on it, and it was 40 It's 42 I was like, ooh, I got to get yeah. it now. And then I just never did. Right there. Yeah, that's the re-release. Okay. Oh, you can get the re-release. Yeah, I'm, it looks awesome. I did something a little wacky, and I oh. pre-ordered a Medicom Mafex hush batman figure Ooh, okay it's a japanese import it's coming next year it's been out they just did a, re a refresh of it but it's coming out next year and it is 75 dollars for a it's six a inch re release it's a yeah it's a re because okay. they put it out years ago and i did it because they're making a hush tim drake robin figure and the prototype looked like the best robin figure i'd ever seen so i'm like i gotta get both now what's it called uh, the company, the company is called Medicom. The brand is Mafex, M-A-F-E-X. Ooh, yeah, yeah. This guy? No, the Batman from that line. The Batman from yeah. that line. Is it this one? It is that one. Yeah, so it's just the cape. The cape alone. <laughs> oh, that's sick. It's like a fully wired cape. That's cool. Yeah. I am waiting for uh. I think it's Gecko is the company. Yeah. I have a, uh, what is it? Venom snake? No. I think it's naked snake. Yeah. Uh, of, it's a big statue. Yeah. From Gecko. They are making a battle damaged cyborg ninja. Ooh. Missing his arms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm waiting on that. I. I was watching the the Hasbro Pulse uh, stream that okay. was uh, last week, and they revealed they, you know they revealed all the new GI Joe figures, the new Transformers, and whatnot. They revealed new Star Wars figures, and Bob, they're coming out with a Black Series Prince Shizor. I saw that. That I'm like, I fucking saw that. Pre-order that shit right now. If you don't know, these real Star Wars fans will know what I'm talking about here. Uh, back in the day there was shadows of the empire it wasn't just a nintendo 64 game it wasn't just a book it was a full-on multimedia project that told the story of what happened in between empire strikes back and return of the jedi and the main villain of that story was not darth vader it was this guy on screen right now prince oh. prince shizor was the main bad guy who was the leader of the black sun crime syndicate we had his action figure the dog chewed it up but yes, now, but now we are getting a, a full-on modern six-inch version with perfect articulation. I'm so excited for it. That was the first thing when I saw this. I was the first image in my head was the chewed-up carcass yes. of the of, of the, the toy. So we, I'm going to put this somewhere where Zim can't get his hands <laughs> on it. And if it's on the Amazon page, it looks like they're coming out with more Shadows of the Empire okay. toys. So fucking Dash Rendar is coming back, baby. <laughs> I this can't wait. Cool. This <laughs> looks a lot better than the toy that oh, we had. Oh, 100%. Also, Shadows of the Empire, not a bad book, I must say. <laughs> no, it's basically, isn't it just a fucking copy of the first movie? No. <laughs> it's like the same plot points, isn't of it? A, of A New Hope? Yeah, isn't no. it? No. No. Okay. Not, not at all. This this is the toy, right? Yeah, that's the toy. That's the toy that we had. That's the toy we had, yeah. So. Yeah. Star Wars is back, baby. We are so back. 
Big news, Pharma Gooch with $10, starting a new job. Here's a raise to my dues. Hell yeah. Hell dude. yeah. He gets a new job and we benefit. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, good luck. <laughs> I saw the figure. I don't have the dash, though. Someone stole it. Uh, did we ever have it? We had that. Yeah, I, just, I actually just like boxed up my three and three quarter inch star wars figures and i saw him like hey, hey yeah i'm gonna get the new one of you uh this is somehow the nerdiest thing y'all have talked about <laughs> is it cheaper without the arms no so the cyborg ninja without the arms is very expensive wait is it cyborg ninja or is it raiden because raiden didn't have arms no it's cyborg ninja from the end of the first metal gear He's, I think he might be missing one arm. He had an arm cannon. Yeah, he might only be missing one okay. arm. I mean, I could pull it up. But, yeah. Uh, but he's definitely missing at least one arm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one arm. But he's all, he's all fucked up and, and bloody. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, because I think he loses... He, oh, yeah. yes. he gets squished. Yes. He gets squished by yes. Metal Gear. It's been so long. How could you forget? I I gotta I gotta play the game again. I'm waiting for the Master Collection to go on sale on Steam so I can get it. I'm waiting for the remake. There you go. What is this? Max Factory motored cyborg? Okay, I thought this was I thought this was like a waifu version of Gray <laughs> Fox. <laughs> Will y'all need to come to New York Comic Con next month? Gavin, Gavin, I shouldn't be saying this on on air. <laughs> He offered us to share a ticket. Oh. <laughs> Gavin Gidry, so. uh, world-renowned comic book illustrator, just wrapped up a very excellent run on Birds of Prey. What are you working on next? I'm like, out of the loop. When are you cosplaying that, Bob? What, the, the waifu uh, Gray Fox? Will, what is your opinion on Penny's big breakaway dev downsize? Due to volatile market conditions. Uh, I did not hear about this. I did hear about it. It's, that sucks. Yeah. I thought that game did good. Yeah. So it's it's real it's it's extra terrible when a game does good and they fire everybody anyway. Yeah. That's no, uh, that sucks. Uh that was pretty good, Penny's Big Breakaway. I didn't get to do play a lot of it, but like what I did play of it, I genuinely enjoyed. Uh yeah, I need to play. That and the other one. Oh, I know the I've... Rolling Beans big big running. That time. one I didn't like as much. Really? It looks really good. It the running looks good. It looks like it looks exactly like those fan made uh yes. Sonic games. And it confirmed why I don't think those okay. games would work very well as Wait, was it Penny's big breakaway? Uh that was made by Christian Whitehead and the Sonic Ooh, Mania team. That sucks. Yeah. That really sucks. Don't forget, Bob, even if your game does good, you're still out. Yeah. I don't get it. A lot of, a lot of game companies, even if the game is successful, they still... Like, uh, fucking Tango. They put out a successful game, yeah. uh, Hi-Fi Rush, and then Microsoft's like, hey, great! Shut down. Yeah, the turnover is just yeah. insane on these. Finishing a creator own book. Ooh. I have one of his books. It's been yes. on my nightstand since he's given it to me. <laughs> <laughs> um and talking to Marvel and DC about what's next. Just knocking out covers. Nice. Nice. I did get um I was in the comic shop and I saw you did the cover for My Adventures with Superman number one, so I got your cover of it. Because we're bros. Uh okay. Superman 78 trade out next month. Ooh, I got to get that for a friend of mine. Yeah. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Here's another cyborg ninja for you. This one looks fucking cool. He's red for some reason. Oh, that wasn't that an alternate suit? Like from, it, from where? From the first game. Like if you play as Tuxedo Snake, he he looks like this. Oh, I didn't I, never I think knew that. I think so. Ninja red version. Yeah. 
still no sponsor for this week's video, Bob? No, you want to sponsor it? I mean, it, it, we're the video will be out on Thursday. It's on the One X Player X One. Yeah, if you uh, complete MGS One two times in a row, Gray Fox will have an alternate costume. Oh damn! Yeah, that's sick. I guess I never did that. Oh, I did. How <laughs> many times? So, if you beat it once, do you get the tuxedo? No, I think if you beat it once, you get the. <sighs> You either get the infinite ammo bandana or you get the the camouflage. So we have a friend who beat <laughs> the original Metal Gear 18 times. Yes. Because he thought on the 18th time something would happen and then it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> so you thought you could play as Ninja. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Uh, you can play as Ninja in... Um, the PC version that we had. No, I was going to say uh, Metal Gear Solid uh, VR missions. Oh, maybe it came. Maybe the PC version. I think the PC came version came with it. Yeah, because yeah. there was like a weird cyborg ninja mode that was yeah. fucking sick. Yeah, <laughs> it controlled weird, but I didn't care at the time. Nothing controlled good then. I just, it was just fucking awesome. To yeah, slice people in half at cyborg ninja. I was like, they should make a whole game out of this, <laughs> and then they did. And then you fight the president at the end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, infinite ammo. Okay, infinite ammo. Do not submit to Ocelot's torture, and at the end, you will get Meryl's ending. She will give you the bandana. Um, for the camouflage, you have to uh, beat the game and submit to Ocelot's torture. Then Otacon will give you the stealth camouflage. So it depends on what you did during uh, the torture scene. So what about the tuxedo? Uh, beat the game twice, once with Meryl's ending and once with Otacon's ending, and then load up a new save. And then is that it? That's how you get the tops. Okay. You gotta but, beat but then there's nothing else. Correct. Well, okay. you beat the game. Yeah, you beat the game twice. You get the tuxedo and the red ninja. Okay. And then you're Greg and you go, I want, I, I, I want, want something play else to happen. Him, yeah. And then you beat it 18 times and nothing yeah. happens. <laughs> and what was cool is that's also how it worked in Twin Snakes. They didn't change it. Yeah. We liked it. Because Twin Snakes is a good game. Uh, that's how you unlock Sonic and Tails. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. We're done. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden or youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand, whatever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, audible.com pocket cast even no matter where you get the show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps with the placement on all of those respective platforms i missed samps thanks for the 12 months and war machine thanks for the 12 months and also uh snake eater says bob i downloaded twin snakes on my steam deck i'll play it eventually but i'm excited nice nice awesome uh, and then ill master said what's the plan for thursday's stream so thursday we'll hopefully have a video out on the one x player x one and I think we're doing the Gotcha SP again. I'm I, I'm gonna I, I think the Flex PCB works, and I got all the components to redo that mod. So hopefully mm -hmm. that'll be this Thursday's stream and next week's video probably, uh, unless I find something out of the PO box that I need to make a video on. But I don't think I I do. Uh, go watch Scootish. He is playing uh the Plucky Squire nice. that came out today, and I want to play that as well. Uh, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons. See you later. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.